My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you guys another video. So today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the Raspy Blitz Bitcoin Lightning Node. This is a fun little project that I got a chance to build a few days ago. And I wanted to give you guys a kind of a how-to tutorial video talking about some of my thoughts and some things that I would look for in terms of you know, how to get the best experience out of building this project. So for those of you guys who are interested, uh, this is going to involve you know, a few different things regarding uh, technical knowledge. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to keep it as simple as possible. I know for me personally, you know, I'm not the most like uh, technical person, right, as far as computer science and whatnot. Uh, so I, I wanna try and keep this tutorial as um, kind of like in layman's term as possible. So to get things started, um, I went ahead and put this together by sourcing um, the components from Amazon. I went ahead and put together an Amazon shopping cart for you guys, just going over all of the items that I had purchased. Now, you can use whatever you guys have as far as hardware components. Uh, if you are building this from scratch, these are the components that I would recommend. Uh, this is also going to be somewhat of a budget build. You know, you can definitely put a lot of money into building a fancy node. But I went with the budget option. So for those of you guys who are trying to stretch your dollars, this is going to be a good option for you. For around about 150 bucks, you can build your own Bitcoin node. So to get things started here, I've got the link of the website that I used in order to follow the instructions and you know, gain uh, knowledge of how to put this all together. It's gonna be github.com. I'm gonna leave a link for all of the materials that we're gonna be talking about here in this video down in the description below. So if you guys do have questions or if you need help, the description is gonna be the best resource for you. And if you do have questions, I'm sure members from the community, myself, we're gonna be willing to help you out. Go ahead and drop any comments or questions that you have down in the comment section below. I'm going to try my best to help you guys out the best I can. So first thing that you need to do in order to get things started with building your first Bitcoin full node is going to gather some hardware components. So that's the first thing that we'll have to take a look at here. What I did, I went ahead and took the time to uh, find the best value in terms of uh, hardware online uh, amazon is my favorite as far as being able to get you know free two-day shipping so what we're taking a look at here you're going to need a few different components in order to store the raspi blitz operating system you're going to need this right here this is a micro sd card 32 gigabytes should be fine i think you can really even get away with 16 gigabytes uh, but you know having a little extra doesn't really hurt anybody it's only a couple dollars more for that the storage that I would recommend. So guys, after putting together this project, the Bitcoin blockchain takes up about 330 gigabytes at present time. So it's it's pretty big uh, as far as the storage that I would recommend. Uh, nowadays, it's like you can get an external hard drive for, in this case, we see two terabytes is $60. Definitely the best value that I've found. Uh, you could go with a one terabyte, but you know, as far as saving a few dollars here and there, you know, you're basically doubling the storage for maybe like ten dollars extra. So just something to keep in mind. I would recommend at least a terabyte. Uh, next, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi for this project. We're using the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Now it's really nice because it comes together in a little kit where you get the power adapter, you get a nice little case, you get the heat sinks. So found that for about sixty-five dollars. And lastly, there's going to be a pretty neat little LCD display that we're going to purchase. Uh, this is definitely something that's very functional. I found that you don't even really need to, to do anything as far as configuring it. It's kind of like a plug and play. So it's really simple. Uh, this one actually comes with a little stylus here. It is a touch screen. So that one's also about 20 bucks. So yep, all the hardware guys, you'll be looking at about $150 on Amazon. These are probably the most budget items that I could find for putting this project together. So after you have sourced all of your hardware, now it's time for the fun part. We get to start playing around with some software. So guys, I'm gonna be going over this webpage here. I am gonna link to this in the description. I think you guys will find a lot of value by following along with this guide after watching this video while you're building your uh, Bitcoin full node. So here it talks about the time estimate, the hardware needed. So yep, just like I was saying before, as far as the time, 
Guys, putting this stuff together doesn't really take a whole lot of time. What's gonna take you the longest is just waiting for the blockchain to download. For me, I had to wait a few days, actually. I was kind of surprised, you know, putting it together from scratch. It took a few days uh, on a pretty decent internet connection. And when I say pretty decent, I mean like it was physically connected to my router. So yeah, I was, I was surprised, but it, it does take a little bit of time, mostly just waiting. Uh, here gives you a list of where you can source these different products if you are not based in the US. So it's nice if you're living in a different country. And it's talking about here, after you do receive the, um, the hardware components, what you would need to do is assemble it. It's pretty straightforward. So you take your Raspberry Pi, you would put the heat sinks on it, and then you can see here what they done was they plugged in the uh, display. After that, you can connect the hard drive. And I have mine set up very similar to this. I just have the hard drive sitting at the bottom, then the Raspberry Pi, and then the display on top. Now, what they've done here, as far as keeping this configuration cool, that's going to be a big thing because it's going to put out a lot of heat. So I do recommend the heat sinks. I feel like that'll help dissipate some heat. But I do also recommend some type of cooling system. For me, I found that it was better to just plug in one of those little USB fans, you know, don't spend a whole lot of money on it, maybe like 10 bucks. What they've done here is they also purchased a shim fan. So a shim fan simply just plugs into the uh, board, the Raspberry Pi board. You can do that, but I found that the uh, display makes it kind of hard to, uh, to operate. Uh, you know, it's just kind of tight, right? Like there's not a lot, a lot of space there. So I like to use an external fan just having that blowing cold air so the heat can dissipate. It's up to you, you've got options, uh, but you can see here how they've went ahead and do that if you decide to do that as well. Uh, next thing what we'll have to do is we'll have to download the Raspi Blitz operating system onto the SD card. So we can see here they've made it really easy guys. This, this website is your best friend when it comes to putting this all together. This right here is what I would look for, the HTTP. This is the link to the uh, image for the software for that. What you will need in order to flash your SD card is a software called Banana Etcher. So I'm gonna link to this in the description as well. It's a great little tool. If you're gonna be doing open source projects like this, you can go ahead and download it based on your operating system if you're on Windows or Mac. So in this case, I'm on a Mac, so we just click on download. Once you go through the process of downloading it, you will need to plug in your SD card to your computer and you'll have to use this link right here to get that image. So after you've written the uh, Raspberry Blitz image onto the SD card, go ahead and take it out, insert it into your Raspberry Pi, and from that point, you are ready to connect to power. Uh, before you do connect to power, be sure to have this connected uh, to the internet if possible, I mean, like, go ahead. I don't think Wi-Fi is something that you would want to use uh, just because it's it's not going to be as reliable a connection um, as opposed to a physical connection. So if you're able to put this close to your router, go ahead and do that. That's what I did, and it's, it's going to save you some time and a lot less frustration in the case that your Wi-Fi is a little spotty. So what you'll need to do after that, you've got your Raspberry Pi assembled. You've got the SD card written and you've got it connected to your router after you've plugged it into power you're going to see a, you're going to see a whole bunch of different things come up on the screen and this right here this blue screen is going to be what you should see after that now it's giving you the option to log in to your raspy blitz with ssh so ssh is kind of like remote access so from your from your computer your desktop you can actually use a terminal or if you are on Windows, you'll need a uh, putty, uh, but you can actually use that to be able to access your Raspberry Pi. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can have it set up where you can just simply go onto your computer and use a web interface as opposed to a terminal. So you've got options, you can use either one, whatever you prefer really. But what you're gonna see after this blue screen is a way to log into your Raspberry Blitz so your SSH admin, this is all gonna be done in the terminal. So you're gonna to wanna to type this in. Your IP address, this is gonna be specific to your device. And you're gonna use this password here, Raspi Blitz. So you should be able to log in to your system after that. It's gonna prompt you 
with this right here, welcome to your Raspberry Blitz. Choose how you want to set up your Raspberry Blitz. What I did was set up a Bitcoin node. You have the option of whether or not you would like to set up a Lightning, uh, Litecoin wallet as well. So for me, I'm using Bitcoin along with the Lightning Network. So we're gonna click on OK. First thing to set up is give your Raspberry Blitz a name. So you guys can have some fun with that. Go ahead and name it. And after that, what you're gonna be looking at here, there's going to be a few different passwords that you're gonna to need to set up. It's gonna walk you through it. It's pretty straightforward. Definitely make sure that you have this written down and you have it stored in a safe place. These uh, passwords are just as important as a seed phrase for a hardware device. So treat these very carefully. Be sure you have them written down and that you have them stored in a safe place. So you're gonna go through the process of creating your passwords. Pretty straightforward here, guys. The software, it's uh, it's really nice. It just walks you right through it. Uh, next thing that you're going to be prompted with here is something regarding your privacy. So running a Lightning node will make your public IP uh, available to other nodes in the network. Now you have this option, which is what I would recommend. It's like a default setting, uh, or you can use the Tor network. And what the Tor network does is it actually uh, protects your privacy in the sense that you know your IP address is not um, exposed. So as far as the sake of this project and you know getting everything up and running, I would just go ahead and stick with public IP. If you decide to use the Tor network, you can also turn it off later on. So it's up to you, whichever you would prefer as far as connecting to peers and whatnot, I would recommend using a uh, public IP uh, or keeping that available for other nodes to see. Uh, the next thing that we'll have to do is obtain the blockchain. So you have your hard drive or your solid state drive connected to your Raspberry Blitz. What we're gonna wanna do is go through the process of formatting the drive. So in this case, it automatically, it walks you through the process. So you wanna select yes. And then to get a copy of the blockchain, the Raspberry Blitz offers the following options. So the default method right here is a torrent. Just go ahead and click on that. It's the easiest way to do it. There's other ways to do it as well. You can copy, you can clone it. Uh, if you have the blockchain on another hard drive, you know you can just connect one hard drive to the other. And in this case, if you're getting it started for the first time, just go ahead and choose the torrent option. It's the default option. Now guys, this is definitely what took my process the longest. It took me a few days and I was very surprised to have that experience, but you know, it is what it is. The, the Bitcoin blockchain right now is 330 gigabytes. So it's it's massive. But that's what you can expect. This is mostly a waiting game from this point on. Um, you know, just continue to follow the prompts here. Lightning is installed and waiting for your setup to see on the screen. So, yep, we're setting up a brand new Lightning node. So just follow the prompts here, guys. This is going to allow you to set up a new wallet where you can send and receive funds. So you want to do that. And this is going to be your seed phrase. So, you know, like I was saying before, be sure to have this written down. This is not my seed phrase. This is that other person's seed phrase, and I'm sure this is just a dummy account. So there's probably no money in here, but uh, let's take a look. Yep, it's just a matter of following the prompts, guys. Once you've done that, it's gonna go through the process of obtaining the blockchain. So you just wanna wait for it. And you should see it reboot automatically once the blockchain has been obtained. And that is pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Once it's all done, you're gonna see this screen right here. So once you've done everything correctly, this is going to be your main screen. So from here, you have the main menu now if you're continuing to be logged in with SSH. And guys, you know, it is something that's gonna take quite a bit of time. So in the case that you do turn off your computer, uh, you can always SSH back into the Raspberry Bits Lightning node. You just want to use the command that we saw earlier, uh, SSH at admin and then your IP address. So, you know, there's no worries if you do have to close out of your computer. Uh, but if you log in to Raspberry Blitz using your SSH after the blockchain has been installed and everything is good to go, this is going to be your main screen. So you have a few different options here. You can go back to your main status screen. You can fund your wallet. You can connect to a peer. You can open a channel with a peer. So there's a few different things here. And I'm actually gonna be going over with you guys what some of those mean in future videos. So 
as far as what I was talking to you about with using a web interface, uh, that's something that a lot of people like to do just because, you know, not very many people are familiar with terminal, especially if you don't come from a programming background. So being able to just, you know, type in a web address and, and use a web interface, it's pretty convenient, especially if you're using this as a way to store some, some Bitcoin. So what you would want to do here is enable that feature. So let me show you. Okay. So there's a way to, let's see here. Do, 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 do. There is a way to do that. It's gonna be on your, your main menu. Let's see. So if you would like to do this all from a web browser with a dashboard UI, so you need to go to services on the main menu and activate the RTL web interface. Okay, so what you wanna do is just press the space bar when you have that option and your system is automatically going to reboot. After it reboots, you'll be able to use this um, web address to be able to log in to your Raspi Blitz using a web interface instead of the terminal. So it makes it really nice, really convenient. It's pretty similar to a CASA node. Uh, as far as the cost for a CASA node, you know, you can spend a few hundred dollars for one like that. But as far as saving some money and you know, a fun little project to put together, this is definitely worth a shot. So guys, I do hope that you found some value from this video. Um, I'm gonna be posting more videos talking about different things that you can do with the uh, Bitcoin uh, Lightning node. Big shout out to Root Zool or Root Zol. Uh, he is the guy that's responsible for putting this all together. So just a huge shout out to you. Um, lots of value in this, uh, in this website. But uh, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you guys are going through the process of building out your own Bitcoin node, let me know down in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you do have any questions or concern regarding this tutorial, go ahead and let me know, and I would love to help you guys out in the, in the best way that I can. All right, you guys. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, take care.